There are some questions that have boggled philosophers and scientists since the dawn of time. What is consciousness? Are we alone in the universe? Is there a god? Who on earth found the Blur Witch Project funny? Is Lorne Armstrong a virgin? Well, this is the question we're going to ask today. And I've got my usual group of friends with me. And also the great Batsby's joined us as well. So, Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think that's your... Uh, you couldn't really, couldn't really start a street without that, could you? So uh, we do appreciate you joining us anyway. It's uh, it's a pleasure. I appreciate, I appreciate you having me. I was really looking forward to this. Um, cool. Well, I mean, um, we... This has been banded around before. Um, people have talked about this for a while. It's it's there was there's been some kind of other discussions, but um, it seems to me that like people take it a little bit too seriously. It's like first of all, no one knows definitively the answer. We can all have very strong opinions, but I mean it's something we'll go into. Nobody knows with a hundred percent certainty. And you know what? I don't think even Lawn does, and that's something I'm gonna potentially touch upon is because he doesn't know what day it is so you know he, he lives his life in such a way that the truth doesn't really exist for him so it's it's pretty impossible we're never going to know but it's kind of fun to speculate about and i think things that you never really are going to get the answer to are some of the funniest things to mull over it's just a bit of fun isn't it you know this pathetic sex offender has he ever had sex <laughs> even just by me saying it and thinking about it in this way is just fucking hilarious um and i'll i'll get off get off i'll sort of move the ball along and say i actually don't know um i'm i'm a bit a little bit on the fence i can see arguments on both sides um, it it is kind of fascinating, though. Um, what's your kind of take on it, Bapsby? Why um, you're new to us this week? I I'm I'm on the side of Lauren is a virgin, and I I struggled with making that decision because he was in the Air Force, and just bear with me because. I was in the military, so I recall um, it was sort of like a college atmosphere where people people did some things, man. So I thought Lauren drank a lot. He was in the military. He had to have at least had one drunken, fumbling night. But I don't know. Just all, all the other, I'm going to say, quote, unquote, evidence, because we really don't know. Um, that. There's, there's no way he's not a virgin. Interesting, interesting. So you're quite, um, you're quite strong in that opinion, aren't you? I am. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I must. I think I'm kind of leaning towards that way. Even being honest, um, there is one thing that I saw. I think it was in the comments when I scheduled the stream, or it might have even been when I put the post, the community post out on the YouTube channel. And a special hello to Shin's manhole, by the way. Thanks for joining us again. Um, Where would we be without it? Exactly. Um, is people uh, going, oh, he doesn't know the female genitalia and and all that? Well, if I'm being completely honest, um, with some of the... There's no way me putting these arguments forward without putting horrible images in people's heads, so I do apologise. But... There's been many drunken fumblings that I've had where I barely looked at the person, let alone studied the genitalia. So if Lorne has had some drunken fumbles, his knowledge of the female anatomy is kind of irrelevant, in my opinion. We know he's never had a, a relationship, so he's never, you know, it's never been, a, a, you know, a long um, sexual relationship. I think I think that's something that everybody can agree with, and I think that's something that even Lorn has admitted himself is that he never he's never had a long term girlfriend, has he? Well, you 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 know where the pee hole is, Andrew. Come on. I would certainly hope so, but um, yeah. But the, and the... I trust you know that there's only one clitoris. Yeah. 
Those two lips. Well, maybe he get, got with a girl that was a bit <laughs> um, special, shall we say. I don't think Lauren knows what his parts are called beyond, you know, Mr. Penis. Yeah, that we, I don't want to That's a good that point. That's a fucking good point. He doesn't even understand his own anatomy. He thinks he's he's right. he's, he's, an well, anatomy. Not... he's an independent entity. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 yes, you give somebody a pass on anatomy. I agree with that. Um, somebody said that maybe we should define what uh, I think it was uh, Dan Jones. Maybe we should define what virgin is. That first is. Of all. I'm glad somebody yeah, brought that up because I was going to actually uh, whoever that was. Thank you for reminding me that I'm stupid because I was supposed to bring that up. Penetrative you know, you sex, basically. So he, ha I'm sorry to be graphic, but I will do this in long language. He had to put Mr. Penis inside Mr. Vagina and the white stuff had to come out. Right. Okay. Oh, well, no. Does I don't the think white so. stuff have to come out? No. Yeah, I don't think but, so. Uh, so. Actually, I'll, mm. I'll, I'll accept a grazing even, you know. You have to no, I'm, I, I. Get on skin, though. No, it doesn't have to, white stuff doesn't have to come out, but it has to be, I mean, where do we go, like 10 strokes, 11? <laughs> yes, a couple of pumps, but I think the woman has to go, ooh, ooh. In order to <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> All right, so it's intercourse. Yeah, so it has to be penetrative. I think that penetrative. how many okay. sort of pumps is kind of irrelevant, and the, the white stuff coming out is probably... Not, I don't think that really. He could still do it and still not be averted. He could not, you know, come to a conclusion and still yeah. have done it. Yeah, so he's... yeah, I'm glad we. I'm glad we. Um, yeah, good be um, out, you know. Yeah, uh, Tiffany, where do you stand? Because you've been a bit quiet. I'm going to also lean toward the virgin, oh. the virgin oh, side. Oh, yeah, come to me. Come to me. <laughs> Great. Baloney. Um, baloney. Yeah, I, I think that I'm leaning more towards that just because Lorne is not a one night stand kind of guy. What do you mean by that? The woman would be. Absolutely not. Meaning he's not he's not able to have that type of an interaction with a woman. He Briefly. he is yeah. more he's more into the the long term. He wants that relationship. He wants the I love you after having sex and you wrap each other in your arms and fall asleep That's inside of each other and right exactly <laughs> That's um, what gets so, yeah. so i think the closest i think he's came close and i think that happened with paula yep and i think that is why he has the reaction that he does about her because even when he's told all of his stories now we already know that all of his stories are bullshit Every single one that he's told about titty fucking next to the brook, you know, sticking his toe into somebody. <laughs> all of that is just it's made up right then. After blowing smoke in each other's face. Right, right, exactly. But I think with Paula, she was the real option. She was somebody that that Lauren really liked. As he said, they were working toward a relationship, which, which means that he was waiting for her to make a move. Because Lauren's not the guy to make a move either. I really real don't life. believe that in real in life. Real life. Okay. Yeah. So I think that when he tells the story about her getting into a fight with her ex fiance, they broke up, whatever. The guy drives her over to Lauren's apartment and she stays there and she, they're kind of hanging out. And then after they're done, he comes back to come and get her. And then that was it. I think that that was probably the closest. I think they probably messed around a little bit. So that is where it could have happened. But Lauren couldn't actually follow through with that. So even when he's talking about these girlfriends that he has had or the first woman that he was with, he tells a story when he was 19 and he lost his virginity to an old, to a 29 year old. This was supposed to be somebody that was a girlfriend and they broke up because of course she lied. There was some kind of cheating. Lauren is always, you know, the victim of some kind of a lying scheme. And even to that point, he doesn't have the same type of a reaction to that person, you know, scream crying to Ramona 
that he's more hurt by her even more than Paula. You know, this this was at minimum 25 years prior to that ever happening, that conversation with Ramona ever happening. So I think that that is the closest he's ever gotten, but he hasn't sealed the deal. Well, he said, if I remember correctly, he said he had sex with Paula, but it wasn't good. And I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think you're probably right. But I, I couldn't understand what that meant. It wasn't good. And I think it's likely that you're right. It didn't go all the way for whatever reason. Um, like you said, he he's too bashful to make the first move. And I, he says he was trying to be respectful, but I think he's just shy and scared and insecure. So... I don't know. I, I agree, though. That that would explain his obsession with Paula over all other women. His twenty-five year long obsession with her. Who's this? Uh, we got a. Uh, we got a. Uh, oh, what do you call it? Spam. This is so yes. cool, Andrew. You made it. Look at this. I'm gonna click on this. See what it does. Oh. <laughs> they are without clothing. Um, <laughs> I think. I think uh, Tiffany, you 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 nailed it on the head. I, I think if we were to examine whether he was a virgin and we were to focus on any specific experience, it would be the Paula experience. And and, and the only reason why is, number one, he remembers her name. Uh, and number two, he's kind of specific about his feelings and emotions about her. But in terms of that night that he had sex with her, or allegedly, um, I have to kind of step back a little bit and examine the scenario again. Uh, um, I don't understand she was with her boyfriend and her boyfriend dropped her off at Lauren's house to have sex and then comes back and picks her up and goes away. I, I, I don't know how that worked out. Maybe they were fighting or uh, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, logic, it doesn't, it doesn't have any logic to it. You know, why would you do that unless you trusted Lauren? Well, that wasn't, like that. that wasn't a boyfriend um, because it was a, I believe it was her fiance, but at that time it was an ex. So they definitely were fighting. They may have broken up. And then she went over to his house. She probably said, drop me off over here. I'm, I'm sure that he was aware of who Lauren was because supposedly they all went to karaoke bars together. So I'm sure he knew, he knew who that was, but I think he could have dropped her off and, you know, and, and that's when it would have happened. But he's been pretty consistent with that story. And I know that that doesn't exactly make make it the truth because because he is consistent with other stories too you mean he's because consistent he memorizes with lies, them. You mean. <laughs> exactly yeah so but i i think when it comes to the sex stories though especially when they are detailed they're they're completely wrong not not only because you can tell that he's lying as he's telling it but they're also ridiculous the details of them are completely ridiculous but i think when it comes to the paula thing he doesn't really go into too much detail. He tells a little bit more and it does sound like maybe she was trying to make moves on him, but I think it's very possible that he would have been scared at that point. He had never done it before. And it probably was sort of like an American pie moment, you know, when the hot girl is with, with that guy and he, she touches his leg and he blows his load in his pants. That's, that's what I was just thinking. Like, Mm -hmm. It, it's it's certainly possible she started making a move and he just Ooh! and that was a <laughs> he'd be too embarrassed to say anything about it. He wouldn't know, <laughs> right, exactly. Wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. Mm-hmm. And well, that's why it would have been bad. What about and that course- separate story he tells about Paula and him laying on a bed and she's rubbing his stomach? Rubbing his stomach. Right? That was and that night. He, well, the, but then he said nothing happened though after that moment. He said. Because Reborn talked to him about that. He said, well, mm-hmm. why didn't you make a move? Uh, well, he didn't know whether she wanted him to make a move. So mm-hmm. it, it's kind of inconsistent about that. Plus, I heard another time where I thought it was you, Tiffany, who asked him whether he uh, had sex with Paula uh, or, or actually had him affirm what you were saying, that he, had, he didn't have sex with Paula and he agreed. Just like the same uh, time that you had asked him, uh, had said, you've never had a girlfriend and he agreed. So I, you know, that, that, that moment where the, the ex is dropping her off at his house and he's the untrusted guy. It's like a penthouse forum, uh, you know, 
situation. And then he, he, he did go into specifics. He talked about him doing her doggy style, I think. Um, uh, I don't I remember don't that. Yeah, he, he was talking about that. He, I can't remember who asked him about that. Maybe I thought it was you. But you're right. The actual act itself wasn't really talked about. It was the emotions part of it. And I think that's what he's riding here. I think he was the third wheel in that relationship. I think he was just the buddy. Uh, can, can you imagine like Paula and her boyfriend, like, and here and comes Lauren. Lauren, he's just like hanging out with them all the fucking time. <laughs> so you could use him to park the car and stuff. You know? Yeah, she doesn't look really mean to him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you see their car pull up and Lauren's always in the back. <laughs> yeah. You could just imagine that being true as well, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> We're dating. <laughs> I, I was listening to two, uh, it's just something I, I thought about when, when Shin brought up, it was like two different calls and don't ask me to name them, but he was telling Debbie, um, when, when Debbie says, um, but you've never had a girlfriend and he doesn't confirm or deny, but he says, yeah, I have a lot, a lot of one night stands. I right. Right. That. And, yeah. and then um in a separate conversation he was and he's it makes me sick to my stomach when he refers to it oh i like to eat um but he says he never uh, never ate my one night stance like he never performed that act on any one night stance but he's never had a girlfriend either so it's just right <laughs> hard to keep keep track of that yeah that's part of my reasoning though because of just all the different stories that he tells if he had an actual sex story you better believe that that story would be told all the time yeah yes, the, i think he would remember yeah every the, detail. there's some Her compelling is... evidence of, of that that's a great point to to bring up and also if you think about it long could be the most difficult person to actually get the truth out of in in some ways, it's very easy to read, but the problem is he doesn't actually know what the truth is. Because he lies so often and sort of manipulates reality to fit his own narrative, I think he gets lost on what the truth is. Now, you might think that that's easy, harder to do when you're dealing with a real memory, but it's true that memories are not as solid as we think they are, and they can be, they can be manipulated depending on how often you lie about them. So it could be... Like, he's giving us these little snippets of information, and none of them actually are 100% consistent. So it's very difficult to... Like, the Paula situation, we've got a concrete bit of evidence there. Not concrete, but a decent amount of fact there to suggest that there was something <coughs> that went on between him and Paula. But yet, we can't quite... There's nothing concrete that's been said that can lean us in either direction. There's a bit of evidence to suggest that... Something happened, but do you know like what you said then, Bapsby, about the fact that if something would have happened, he would have gone over it and over it and over it, and and that's I can I can actually um, that that's you know I, I believe that that's um, something interesting to point out. But I, there's also another part part of me that thinks if he was a virgin, wouldn't he be? more insecure about that fact wouldn't it wouldn't it be a massive wouldn't it be so obvious in the way that he talks about sex and he'd be like so shy and in do you no, understand what i'm getting no at? he'd overcompensate he would overcompensate a lot of people would do that especially somebody I, like him and i think that's what he does when he says this nonsense about oh she took her left leg and she put it over yeah. me and, she, <laughs> and i felt the tit and he had to take the milk bag out and nice tits can i fuck him <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what he does. But that could just be to compensate on the fact that he's not had a lot of sex. Now, we know he hasn't. He's not had... Even if he has, we're talking... Let's just say he has had a, a few drunken fumbles. We're talking two or three. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to count his sexual experiences on one hand, and that would be overdoing it, I think. So, it, I just think there's a part of me that thinks if he'd never had sex and he knew it, there'd be overly obvious signs... That I don't see in my really, yeah, really. Because okay, like I'm gonna be inside all night long. Okay, no, we're but gonna he sleep doesn't... together where my penis is. 
Um, I, we're going to keep touching each other's penis constantly, even after even after no, I have. No, but that, that's, that's a lack of that's a lack of experience. That doesn't miss. That doesn't discount a drunken fumble. Because if if you if you're a guy. Like when you're young and you maybe your first experience is a drunken fumble, it doesn't matter at that point you've done it. You've 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 broke you've broken your duck and you don't have to worry about it anymore. I get the sense he's not that I could be wrong, but that that's just something I feel. Does anybody agree with me? Probably. Well, not. you're saying that <laughs> you don't think that Lauren has any sense of urgency, really? Or any no, sense of not desperation? Even, not, really? not even that. It's not a a massively over the top um, insecurity that I detect with regard to him not have, have had an experience before. I just think it would be more over. I think there'd be something in the chat log as well that would easily point to it. I, I, See, I'm making what, assumptions I, here. I, I disagree with that. I think there's plenty of that. Uh, I, I think there's enough to show that he's, he's desperate to, yeah, to but let that happen. Well, he's so not going to Everybody say that, that turns outright. up to the Stingos. Everybody is desperate, you know, that turns up there. No, he's got a different kind of he's, – he's desperate. you got to remember, the way he was talking to Kalo, he was trying to set up a relationship, a romance, a future bride, the whole thing. He wanted to lock that in. I mean, it, there was no other predator like him, let's face it. I mean, to some degree, some had a little piece of him, some didn't. But the question I have is, one, one of the biggest things, when he says, I, I had a bunch of one-night stands, I'm a male slut and all that shit, that's about as overconstant sitting as you can get but, but like but i said though, is, that could just be overcompensating his lack of experience because not have okay not... now we're talking about a matter of degree then okay well has not... he had sex or is he yeah. had very little well sex? no but i mean the question is uh, no the question the original question remains is has he ever ever had a sexual you know a, a, a kind of um a, a, you know right a, intercourse yeah um intercourse. the fact that he's never had a girlfriend, a relationship is more obvious to me in the chat log, in his the way he talks, his insecurities, his desperation. He's he's so craving for that relationship that he's never experienced. That to me is more obvious than what might be a lack of sex. Now I'm not saying he, he that he isn't a virgin. He could very well be. There is some fucking <laughs> some very compelling evidence. There's no doubt about it. But um, I, I can see that. I, I can see that. You, what you're saying is he had a taste of it. Now he really wants it again. Well, you, you think about his desperation, and we talk about that so often. How? Why does he put himself in this position? Why does he get catfished over and over again? Why did he go back to Ramona? We all know why desperation there is no other answer it is desperation um to the degree which we've never really seen before i mean to be honest it it happens in more extreme criminal cases which we're not going to go into so it's nothing new in humanity like the pull and the towards the opposite energy polarity towards the female or the male is is it's, it's a huge part of our being so it's not surprised that people go nuts um, but well, look what look what Lorna Copia wrote. Perfect response to what you just said. Um, uh, I can't. Um... It says uh, Andrew. Statement analysis notes the difference between convincing language as opposed to conveying info. The truth needs no embellishment. If he had sex, he wouldn't be so eager to convince. But then, but that goes back to my original point about him convincing that he's had a lot of sex. Because let's just say he has broken his duck once and had a drunk, drunken fumble. As a guy who's in his thirties, forties, fifties, whatever, what you know, the, whatever age he was at the time when he went into detail, he's still going to be massively insecure about the fact that he's had very little, and massively insecure about the fact that he's never had a relationship. Somebody of that age, who has has not had the one thing that he's always sought, is going to be huge. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that it isn't, that he isn't. You know, w w like I said at the beginning, I don't fucking know. Yeah, I get it. But I'm, I'm just saying that it is, I, I don't believe it's as black and white as what some... Can, can I post a, a question, a factual question to Tiffany real quick? Uh, and maybe she knows, maybe she doesn't. These one-night stands that he talks about, 
are they in the form of meeting strangers at a new place or are they in the form of having fuck buddies booty call girls that he knows around town or something you know he's mentioned both he's mentioned meeting people at the bar and he's also said that it was within a group of friends yeah so okay now we got <laughs> now the he... question is does, does lauren have any friends okay he thought my... one night stands were where you had sex with someone that you didn't have a relationship with it like it didn't necessarily mean one night like <laughs> He didn't, he didn't understand. That is true. I do agree with that. I don't think he really knows what that means because then he would be talking about, they would be coming back for more, (laughs) which. Right. Nobody's ever complained. Right. No one's ever complained. Everybody thinks his penis is beautiful. Speaking of which, you know, there's a big, there's a big obstacle here that he has. And I believe he's, he's physically, he might be physically incapable of having sex. Good point. That's a good point. Because there is some actually, Shin, um, thank you for bringing up an interesting take on Lorne's penis, but we do need to talk about his penis, because I'm interested in it massively. But uh, just going off slightly off topic, are there any pictures, with the amount of times that Lorne exposed himself to Kayla, he was never, he had never had an erection. Now, I, I'm he, just wondering... He did not well, I don't. Th- I mean, well, I've never seen it. I never heard him mention it. Um, in, yes, in he the- did. He, t- he said he would say things like, "It's not very big right now, but it's yours. You own it." Uh, it's not very big right <laughs> now. But he also told her, "I, I can get it up if I can get it up there." Look, it's really happy now. If I could only show you. Well, you in, know, the, the, and then the part, beyond Kayla. Can, can we agree though that it 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 it, we, it it didn't seem to get it hard quite a lot. I think we can maybe say. So what you said about him maybe not being able to, I think that's a possibility. And I think that would be amplified with a real woman in his presence. In in later years. But that doesn't mean he he could perform with a woman. We know he can perform with himself, at least somewhat. But remember in the chat log, he told Kayla that it wouldn't take long for the white stuff to come out. So I would imagine he had an erection at that point. Do you know, there's nobody on the whole of YouTube that's discussing something like this right now. You know, it just it just struck me. (laughs) I was just talking about this guy (laughs) masturbating, and (laughs) fucking just so funny. (laughs) Oh, I don't know, but very true. I I was just thinking on that on that note. Um. Up north says it's standing up on its own, baby. How excited he was about that! Like, right. oh my god! I, I mean, I'm not a guy, but I thought that was like in the normal course of events. That that wasn't like an odd occurrence. I mean, anytime I've seen one, that's pretty much what's happening. When did so, he say that? <laughs> he said that in a call to Ramona. Um, I can't remember which one it was. Please, somebody rescue me. I don't know. I can't remember either, but it definitely it definitely happened. And he was very excited. Like, yeah. surprised, like a toddler. Yeah. It's, uh, it's doing something different. <laughs> he was so excited, he had to hang up immediately to take a picture. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's he has taken photos with an erection. We've obviously seen it. But he has taken many photos when he's not. And that thing is so shriveled up. Or when he's in the shower and he's wanting to, you know, show her what, what it looks like. He's flopping it around. I mean, that thing is not rigid at all. It is flopping. <laughs> well, I remember a, I remember a discussion he had with uh, Will, who was getting on him for um, uh, sending photographs to Rhoda. And how he said every one of the photographs, he had a flaccid dick. So, you know, and, and by the way, these are times where you're not catching him in a cameo. You know, you're not catching him. Oh, he just got on the show. He's actually wanting to sexually arouse you. He's trying to do something to turn you on, you know. So that would be the moment when you would, I don't know, fluff himself, whatever he's got to do. I don't think he can. I don't think it's possible. Right. Right. 
Well, Pizza Driver said something interesting a while back that I wanted to bring up to you because when Lorne bought condoms, he bought an entire box <laughs> to go there for that night. So do you think it's interesting that he would have bought an entire box versus uh, just a little packet? I think he had a future with her. I, I don't mean, think he was you, all for that night. I, I think other that? guys bought whole boxes too. I don't know. Are you trying to say, Tiffany, that that sort of means he's, he hasn't got a clue what he's doing kind of thing, and that, that would sort of... Right, that could be, right, that could be one of the things where, you know, because Lorne, when he believes that he's going to have a woman, he thinks they're just going to be fucking all night. Yeah. But... So... But I still I, I... think that that adds to the... You see, this is the difficult thing when you disc- when you're trying to figure out if he's ever had sex of of the 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 drunken fumble that I the more that we're talking about it from what you guys told me because someone did point it out in the call that I have not heard the amount of calls um, that you guys have and it puts me at a diff- disadvantage. Maybe it does. I don't know. But the more that you guys are talking about it and the more I've heard, it seems like there's a possibility. He had something go on with Paula that didn't go very well. And that would be classed as intercourse, but not... Do you get what I mean? That would mean he's no longer a virgin, but that would create a lot of insecurities. That would be the reason why he, he kind of talks about Paula more than... And that could might be the reason why she blew him out, you know, potentially. I mean, it's all a lot of assumptions, but it's, it's a possibility, isn't it, the way he talks about it? Well, the other thing is, too, is that he talks about how he doesn't like blowjobs or he's never been able to complete with one. And I think that that may go along with it as well, perhaps with Paula, because I do believe if he even got close to having sex, it was with her just based on how he saw that relationship. But I think that maybe she was she could have been trying to get something going with him and then wasn't able to. Yeah. I don't know, just, uh, Tiffany, about that. If you read the chat log, he was pretty big into dethroating and all that shit. And the chat log. Sucking his cock, the lollipop, all that crap. Mm. I mean, he, you know, he's, again, I think that's evidence of his, uh, you know, overly doing it to show he's got experience. Well, I, that's not it's not really something that's satisfying for me. I, I, um, Paula could have given him a hand job and he would be in love with her. I just mean, looking that, at his dick is enough for her. <laughs> yeah, he sees that as a sexual act, seeing someone naked. Yeah, absolutely. So is it is it when did he say he doesn't like blowjobs? He, when did he say that? He said that I think one he said time. that to Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He said he couldn't complete or whatever. Because um, th- wouldn't that right. I mean obvi- the obvious thing to draw from that would be is, is he must have at least had some kind of a, a experience with that? But no, he, he could. I, I was going to address that. I think he's he's heard a lot of this stuff. I think his brothers talk about sex openly in a very offensive way. It probably that's how he that's how he learns what he's what he's learned, and he adopts what other people say. He's one of those guys. Well, that, but if if that's the case, I mean, in my personal experience, I've never heard somebody say that they don't like blowjobs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is interesting because didn't he want Kayla to give him a blowjob on the drive home? He, he did. did talk about it a lot in the chat log. Yeah. yeah, he was into it. You know, nobody's ever said, you're right, Tiffany, in the history of the man, nobody's ever said, stop sucking my dick or I'll call the police. Yeah, Nobody. Dan Jones <laughs> has brought up a point that I don't usually like to touch upon this stuff, but um, in fact, forget it. Um, it's just about his previous... Um, he, 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 he believe he, he said. I mean, everybody fucking knows, don't they? He reckons that he was subjected to some form of abuse in the past that involved that, and that might be a reason. That's another video, man. It is <laughs> another video. We'll we'll not we'll not go into that because it's something I've always um, not really wanted to go into. Although really. it could be right. Well, I think here. if the, if <laughs> I think if that were the case, though, he wouldn't talk about it. If yeah. that were actually the case, he wouldn't talk about it. So, and the fact that he was talking about it a lot with Kayla, you're right. It was all over the chat log. And he, he talks about it too with various women. 
So yeah. I think I think it's you know that's his way of of talking about sex in a way that he's not really too familiar with, um, but it's something that he's supposed to like. So he'll talk about it like that. But you know when he's when he's talking to Jamie and you know maybe he's opening up a little bit with the truth and saying that he doesn't like it or he wasn't able to complete. I think maybe that is going back to his one experience that he had. Or maybe he couldn't maintain a heart on, you know, you never know. Right. Exactly. So he wasn't able to complete. Yeah. And also, didn't he, didn't his one night stand spill over to Nashville? I mean, that, what I'm trying to do is. Oh, absolutely. Is yeah, trying to focus the time periods when all this stuff happened. Yeah, he supposedly um, had like two or three in Nashville. It 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 wasn't mm-hmm. like every night. He acknowledged it was like when I say acknowledged, um, it was like two or three, something like that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. remember he it was when a- he bought the condom, he said it was because he had just happened to run out the night before. How or how to trap. is that? Right. If he was having all these one night stands or even if, I mean to Lauren three would seem like a lot he would have a supply of condoms on hand he wouldn't have just had to buy them because the of diseases of thing. <laughs> unless he claimed he was having unprotected one night stands which I, I wouldn't doubt uh, uh, you know again I, I, this has been mentioned before but he allowed Kayla to have 24 seven access to his cameras. And um, I don't know, I think something might've been picked up. And not only that, he would have been as desperate to talk to Kayla if he was getting something, 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 you know? Yeah. Didn't he yeah. supposedly bring one back when his air mattress had sex they with her on it. air? Yeah. yeah they broke wouldn't it. she have, have, wouldn't they have seen that? <laughs> really? Well, yeah. I think I, that woman. I think he probably would have dropped Kayla. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right. Another specific event that he mentions is that he had a woman when she was uh, when she was menstruating. I swear to God, I was just thinking that. Well, (laughs) finish it off where we got Babs. The trash bag. The fucking trash bag. When did he just explain the context of when he mentioned that? He says he Um... stuck a trash bag under her and. And they had sex. Then. He was speaking. Yeah, he was speaking to Casey at the time at the very beginning. And she had asked him if she if he ever had sex with a woman on her period. And his explanation was, yes, he put a trash bag under her. So yeah. was it a direct? Sorry, was it a, a, a closed question that he asked to answer yes or no to? Yes. Right. Because obviously that. He, he no, probably... no, he embellished. He talked about the garbage bag. He talked about he also talked about how if you have sex in your and your you're on your period you it's going to give you cramps right mm-hmm. no but what i mean is somebody just randomly mentions gives him a yes or no question he's going to not he's going to basically give the answer that that makes him look the best rather than the truth oh that's a given yeah so that's of course given. he's going to oh, say course. yes i it's have just... Right. It's just like when he was asked if he ever titty fucked anybody. And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he came up with this story. <laughs> that and that so story great. was hilarious. It was oh, hilarious. Was it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't It wasn't. like a, a titty fuck. It was It was like he was going at her with a girl. And then he looks at her and says, oh, it's nice tits. Mind if I fuck him? <laughs> like, right. Okay. Wow. That's, that's normal sex dialogue, right, guys? It is it's, for me. It's never, it's never <laughs> failed me. Oh. <laughs> I think but, those are his fantasies and that's why he's it's easy for him to come up with those embellishments. It's like he fantasizes about those goofy ass romantic like like it's a romance novel. That kind of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think just like with what Andrew said too, um about him needing to answer a question. So when he's asked have you done this or when did you do this? He's, I don't think, going to feel very comfortable saying, I never did that before. Um, unless it's, you know, did anybody shove anything in your ass while you're having sex? I mean, it's going to be something like that. But I think when it comes to those normal questions, when was the last time you did this? When was the last time you did that? He's going to make up a story and he's going to make it up on the spot. It could be something that he's thought about. Before. 
What happened? Because... Oh, there it goes. Sorry. Because you, you can never be one up on him. That's why. Right. But but I also think that he's making up the story. It's it's like the dump truck man. Right. Right? I mean, it's liar. exactly... Right, but it's so funny getting those stories out of him. Or the Christmas tree and all that. Or the Christmas tree. None of it ever makes any sense. It's Mm -hmm. all just this, you know, he's making it up on the fly. It's it's exactly like when he was talking to Ramona and saying he was going on a date with Jenny from Walmart. And when they started pressing him, like, oh, we'll give her a call. Then I was like, uh, I, you know, he didn't really know what to say. So he comes up with a thing that Tony's the only one with her phone number. And right. it's, it's so funny, you know, to have him come up with that. But he, you know, I, I don't think he has an easy time saying I've never done that before. So he's going to come up with some crazy story. It's just like for his class, when one of the questions is you have to list your sexual history. All of it. Oh, I'd love to read that. Did he, did he give you a copy? Yeah. What? Oh. I need to see that. Yeah, I believe, <laughs> I believe that he did. I'm sure he did. Um, I'll, I'll have to look back, but, um, he, he made it up completely. Names, dates, things like that. And there Names, there dates, lies the ages. problem. We've got no concrete information to go off. Just these bizarre fucking tales that just well, that's suit the, thing. the need at the time that he was asked the question. Right. So it's more than even two a... pages. Huh? Didn't it start with like a kiss on the playground or something. Yeah, it was when he was very young. Yeah. Right. It like did. In fourth grade or something. He it, yeah. his sexual history. Right. I think they were supposed to, though. I think oh. it's any type of contact, any type of physical contact. So even if it wasn't sex, if it was just, you know, touching her boobies, then he would have to write it down. But if Lorna is given two pages and they say, write down your sexual history, he's going to fill up the two pages with names that we've all heard before which is always interesting because those names get recycled and they're attached to different stories i need to see that tiffany yeah me okay. too that's what we're doing that's, on the next that's stream. amazing can i can we go back to the one night stand thing and there's something that i, I think we should yes. all talk about is lawn's ability to get potentially or not one night stands now even with this particular aspect of it i can see both sides there is a lot of drunk desperate women out there always there is a lot of drunk desperate men out there always it's not a gender thing it's a fucking fact of life um and as david brent says women are dirty but um dirty filthy so does one would ask this question does lauren have the ability to pull a woman because it's not an easy task if you have standards to get sex on a night out is and to take a decent woman back isn't easy it's doable but it's not easy it doesn't isn't something even it's rare too yeah it isn't something that you can guarantee he talks every about night. It, he talked about it like like it was a it was a nightly thing for him, like it was you know he had a different woman every day of the week. Well, he you know, impressed um, all these women with his karaoke singing. I mean, of course. Well, <laughs> here's the thing though, I I believe that Lauren doesn't initially uh, repel uh, repel anyone. I think that he has the ability to walk in walk up to a woman or a group of women especially if he's with other men that that might help him and then they might see him as friendly and soulful or whatever or or just easy laugh he laughs easy and you know he seems to be harmless but then when they get him alone you know if he gets that one clue that this woman's interested in him by the way that's the common denominator everybody he's been with has been always interested in him first Mm -hmm. that's what it seems to be to me but if they're interested in him and, and in his mind, he'll start to pull his Lorne shit, I think, right away. And it'll be in a subtle way. It won't be, you know, him starting screaming and talking about Dan's cock and all that other stuff. I think it'll be something more along the lines of, you know, um, if some guy gets too close to her, you might try to get in between, you know. And she, and she picks up on these things like this. And, and I think that that's what happens. His ugly personality would come out. And and and. And the trip from the bar to the car would never happen. I, I don't think it could. But again, on the on the, 
you know, the rare occasion that this does happen, it doesn't happen as frequently as he said it did. I, I, I honestly believe if he had even one one night stand, he would never, ever let her go. Yep. No, but it he doesn't let stalker. people go, though, Batsby, does he? No. Did you, do you know I mean, mean, what would you define as letting someone go? Are you talking about I mean, he'd end be... up on the news? No. Not getting a restraining order for one. Restraining order. That's that's. I mean, and I mean that. I'm not making a joke. Uh, Each stalker. Each oh no, stalker. I'm interested in the question. I think it's a really interesting road to go down because if you look at the catfishes with, um, like Debbie when she's saying all these horrible things, he'll he'll put the phone down but always pick it back up, which right. fucking just cracks me up. It's so hilarious. It's like, why are you even fucking bothering put the phone down then? Um, so of course he thinks he's going to convince her. That through his passive aggressive bullshit, oh, I guess you like all the guys, don't ya? That she's gonna go, oh no, no, I don't. I really like you. I, I, yeah. I mean, it, that would translate into real life. And if he yeah. were to find, I mean, the only way it wouldn't happen is if he had sex with a one night stand and he didn't know where she lived or her name or he, and he, but he would follow her home. She'd never get rid of him. But, no, but there's a possibility. I mean, I suppose. Are you saying that Lorne would engage in criminal stalking behavior, borderline? Yes, on... yes. He does now. Let's look mm -hmm. at let's look at Nikki. Nikki yep. is a real life example. This is somebody after the sting. He was able to drink at that time. Goes to a bar, meets Nikki, has never kissed her never had sex with her nothing this was a woman that was willing to talk to him <laughs> knew about you know he must have told her about the show because he said that she knew wow. this was somebody who reportedly was a drug addict um he may have been recovering may not have been who knows but he was willing to throw money at her he was willing to buy things he was willing to introduce her to his family as a girlfriend, but she wasn't. And he did engage in criminal stalking behavior because his mm -hmm. POs had to come over and tell him that she filed a complaint against him for calling 38 times over a course of a, of a couple of hours. I think that's a definite yes then, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. but, we can, but we can also see that it wasn't, just sex that made him do that it wasn't a one-night stand this was somebody that he had met at a bar and you know because she was willing to talk to him he went what he went like full force at her but yeah a couple of points about that obviously he does engage in stalkerish behavior but that doesn't mean well, so let's say he had a one-night stand with someone and he didn't get the details after it happened at his place uh, and then they disappeared because they woke up, sobered up and thought, what the fuck am I doing with this guy, and ran off. That's a possibility. Um, it also could be that he did engage in this kind of stalking behaviour, and we just don't know about it. We're not going to know everything. The thing about the Nashville situation is, how long was he there before he got busted in Nashville? Like six months, weeks, right? maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't long. Less six weeks, months. including the month on the chat log. Yes, we would have. And he already I, harassed women at his workplace. We would have known about we don't, it. We don't know that. We don't know we that. Don't know but, that. No. But, but when they say uh, pe people uh, feel, he actually said <clears> it. He said he was talking to too many people in the building. You know, he wasn't talking to men. So no, know. but we also, I think it's a it's a good argument to say that we don't know what that conversation was. That's what Lauren is saying. That they're saying that he was talking to too many people, but. Yeah, but he was offering but that we don't... to say what a nice, friendly guy he was. He wasn't saying that as a problem. So he he had no clue. That probably was the truth. That's probably what they told him. But he he spinned it that way. You know, uh, women are kind of creeped out by the dude. That, that was what I was I was going to say. You know, look what he did with the Nikki situation. He turned that into Nikki is an ex-girlfriend. Like, that's his point of view. I think if he had a, a one-night stand in Nashville, that would be another ex-girlfriend. Like, I weren't going to do it because I had this other girlfriend. I mean, I... Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I, also, we would know 
from the chat log, if he'd had a one-night stand, he would have spent less time talking to Kaylee because he would have been engaged in this stalkerish behavior, I well, believe. There are moments where they're a really short or there's one where they couldn't find him when he went to the barbecue. So there were there were windows of opportunity for him. Hmm. Um, I'll not, give him not that. much, though. No, not much. I mean, uh, I, that, I, I, I don't sure. believe I think there would have been some telltale sign if he'd have had a, some kind of a relationship or not a relationship. There had been some kind of sexual liaison in that chat log time frame now you might say how and maybe i'm just talking bollocks but i don't know i think we'd kind of there'd have been clues i don't see any so i don't think he did have any kind of one night stand in nashville well just the fact that he kept talking to kale is enough for me i mean why would you need to do that to to expose yourself to that criminal conduct if what you're after with her, you're getting somewhere else. Yeah, but a one night stand isn't what Lorne wants. Lorne wants the relationship. Lorne wants. He's, he'll take anything, Andrew. It doesn't no, matter. no, no. And I think that adds more weight to the. Um... And, and and I think that the term one night stand is is something that happens retroactively for him. I don't think he sees it at that time as a one night stand. But when it doesn't work out, it was a one night stand. That kind of thing. I wonder if he went out on purpose, specifically seeking a one night stand. I wonder. I wonder if he no. went out at any point no. with that goal. <laughs> Who is he? Um, one I don't more think thing, so. by the way. The stalker. There's another stalking incident, which is recent history, where he tried to sell that uh, or rent the um, the shed out to um, some woman. I couldn't tell if she was a sex worker or whatever her pro- her, her issues were, but she had told Lauren. Uh, and again, I don't know how we got this information that she sees him following around town in his truck. So this is, this is stalking Lorne. Um, and, and, and if he was with anyone, then that person would have been, it would have been stalked. There's no, there's no, I agree with Babsy. There's no way he would have let anyone go. No, I mean, but, but like I said, it, it I agree with that, with that hundred percent, but it, it, we've got no evidence specifically to suggest that it that that didn't happen that he didn't stalk somebody during that period he was there even for the six weeks it could have been a one night stand he didn't find the details or he did stalk them Uh, some big brother type person said what the fuck are you doing it doesn't really look good for him if you were looking at this saying right where's the evidence that you did get laid it's fucking paper thin at this point if it exists at all you know in fact there's fuck all really (laughs) I don't even think he's ever been kissed. That's my opinion. Well, this is another point where we're going to bring up and we'll get to that. But I believe that there was no there was no one night stands in Nashville. Um I don't I mean if we get back to would he be able to pull it off first of all? I mean Tiffany, what do you think about a potential lawn bear scenario where he sees a female and this female is pretty desperate? Do you think there's a potential that he could get somewhere she would have to do all the work right he's not going to go up to her and and start anything i don't see that happening at all just because of his insecurity and his lack of confidence with that too and even though i do obviously dispute a lot of what lauren says but one of his claims is that the women always came to him Right. Uh, and I, very I think interesting. That, very interesting. it Locking also, feeds into, yeah. it also mm-hmm. feeds into the fact that he is insecure. You know, he, he's he's not going to want to walk up to a woman and have her just say, what are you doing? <laughs> he would have to have a conversation. And God forbid, you know, he's the most boring son of a bitch I've ever met. I can't imagine any woman would want to stay more than 30 seconds. You know, so I got this closet I'm working on. I got the sheetrock, and then I got my brother Roy. I have a problem, and Mom. Where do you meet Mom? She really where do you meet my mom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would I need would to have a really. Mom. I know, <laughs> right? Exactly. You're like, Mom, get out of here. I'm, I'm leaving. Oh, for the my mom. I think he would have to have a really strong wingman to talk like to Tony. talk to her first. He's like Tony. Tony, right? Um, hey. but somebody, somebody like Look Shin. Buddy. Shin would be, I, I feel like a great wingman. To yeah, you'd be talking be. him up, you know, you'd be, 
you'd be like, oh, do you meet my friend Lauren over here? And then kind of get their conversation going. And yeah, well, Jim was my wingman in Boston, and it went really well. So that's very, very true. Yeah. Well, you, the thing with Lauren is I would have to keep Yeah, she can work with anybody, see? I, I was trying to keep you know, one of the things about Lauren is that he really goes after people out of his league. You know, they've got to be young, they've got to be beautiful, they've got to be pretty. No, they don't he wouldn't... have to be anything, though, do they, dude? You've already said this guy is not very no, discriminatory. It... You know what I mean? Yeah. Not very I mean... discriminating. Yeah, of course, he has preferences, but then preferences go out of the window. I mean, was Winnie a... I did can't see him put, going after did, an unattractive woman. Did he I can't see, see photographs that. of Winnie? Yes. And what did Winnie look like? Because she sounded fucking horrendous. Wasn't she that meth head girl? With, <laughs> yeah, yeah, girl? she was. Mm -hmm. She was what? Sorry. I, I don't know. She was a drug addict. So, so yeah. what I'm trying to say is, did she? Because I believe the pictures of Ramona, she was like quite an attractive girl. Mm -hmm. Um, did. Winnie looked like an attractive girl. No, she looked like she looked like a mess. Right, yeah, and sounded like, like a mess. Movie. So, and he was like besotted with this person for some fucking reason, wasn't he? I mean, th she did that yeah. character didn't seem to have any any, you know, good points. <laughs> no, there no, there really no. wasn't. There really wasn't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she's in a tub for God's sake. She should, yeah. I mean, something's going to happen to you. You're going to get hurt and she's going to be laughing. That's how the situation is going to go with somebody like Winnie. And he was trying to hold on to her very tightly. He didn't want to let her go. Yeah. So he says. And, and best this was a character that was designed to be pretty horrendous as i understand it it was it was done in such a way to look how desperate lawn is look what he puts up with kind of thing i mean the little clips that i mm -hmm. heard I, I just like what the fuck is this you know? oh definitely yeah i mean that that was the point was you know lauren lauren is gonna stick around at least on the phone the female lauren right i mean right yeah, yeah she's just a terrible person um, as, so... as possible exactly I I have no evidence to back this up, but I always imagined Lauren um, would be attracted to a slight chunky. Like, that would be his side. <laughs> well, they did write that. That was straight from the brain of Lauren, that. that. <laughs> slight chunky. Okay. You know, it, it's interesting, but we just did a, a, you know, a great, a review of some great literature uh, written by this man. <laughs> did we? I don't remember that. And, and you can, you, I think you can pull out some evidence there, too, about this debate. Yes. Um, oh, you mean the you know, the, uh, the, wet, the wet center the or whatever he fucking said? All that nonsense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> it's <Like> smelling <laughs> dampness or whatever. Yeah, her core. <laughs> and then I flipped her over. No, it's like it's, it, it was like it was like violins in the background. Yeah, even the timeline of when they had sex didn't make any sense because they seemed to have sex for the first time, but it wasn't the first time. It was like the second time, but the first time didn't count. It's like, fucking hell, dude. What's going on in this crazy sex life of yours? And they came at the same time. I'm sorry, but who remembers Lauren being asked about Lady Seaman and whether he took Lady Seaman to the face, and he, he said yes. That's and right. It looks yeah, just like white. men's semen. I know that. You're white, stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I did you ever take a load know. to the face, Lauren? Yes, I have. How many times have we heard him say, "I want to swallow your cum"? <laughs> yeah. It's not looking good for Lauren. If he was in a court of no. law now and he needed to prove that he'd had sex to um to get off the hook, well, he'd be. There's only one way. There's only one way. Somebody would have to come out. Um, uh, you know, obviously, the, we can't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. Oh, um, I think uh, uh, that's why it's tricky. Because that's why it's very. I mean, that's in that's integral to the problem that we're talking about now. Is we've only got his word for it. We don't have any secondary evidence, um, really at all, do we? Um, that's the problem. But 
it doesn't even as far as we're going into it it doesn't discount a young drunken fumble it doesn't discount something happening with Paula like a failed sexual fucking what fumble did you get to keep saying that word because too, keep yeah. saying fumble because yeah. it's the only thing I can imagine Lorne having had but from from what we defined of him as him losing his virginity that would actually count you know which is yeah, a, quite, uh, a silly question know. because we're never going to fucking know like and it is fucking stupid but it, it, it is quite in, it's fun to explore isn't it like because it's funny and you just for somebody who who basically has made a career out of well actually he's made a career out of not getting any hasn't he if you think about it the whole reason he exists in our sort of world is because he tried and failed to get it on with the, some girl who ended up not being real. I mean, yeah. that, I suppose if that doesn't add weight to the cause that he's not done it, you know, what does? I know at the beginning, I never considered him being a virgin. Just never even thought of it, mm. you know, but I then. Why? 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 Well, I think because just the, the his age, maybe. The, right. His, yes. his age, the fact he was going to bars and drinking and, you know, it's not as if he was sheltered in his home this whole time. You know, he's been around other people. I would imagine, you know, through the course of, you know, the many decades prior to when he was spoken to, something had to have happened. Now, you know, taking into account just the chat log and his weird stories that he tells about them, you know, him sleeping inside of her and stuff, you're like, well, I don't know that he really understands how it works. <laughs> and so that kind of raises the question. But then, you know, eventually when the, when the actual question is raised, is Lorna virgin? And then you're thinking, well, I don't know. And that's what makes it funny to think of all of the possibilities that maybe he is. Maybe he is. So, yeah, it's definitely a funny question. It's just hard to conceive that he's not. That's that's the problem. I mean, I, I just I just can't. I, I think he was worse. He was a worse person when he was younger than he is now. Now, I mean, you know how you mellow out when you get older. Mm -hmm. This is him mellowed out. So ah, that, our... th that's a good mm -hmm. point, that Shin. Can I just say that younger Lorne would have been a different entity than what he is now. Like, he's been through quite a lot, not in the ways that most people do, like genuine trouble and growth. There's been no growth, but he's still had lots of experiences which have made him a more pronounced version of what he already was, clueless. Which means that something may have happened when he was a lot younger. When he well, was more normal, potentially. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he didn't play basketball. That's his problem. But but the, <laughs> the thing is, I think his, his language skills were worse. I think his attitude toward women were worse. What, when I he was think... younger? Yeah, I, I think you know? all of that. And you got to remember, he's surrounded by these brothers who were, you know, neanderthals you know so you know i i can't imagine that his game was that good when he was younger and had some you know degree of good looks you know and... no and he also said in high school he didn't date anybody because he didn't like anybody which is bullshit but he didn't he didn't date any he didn't have any experience at all until after high school according to him right so and, that... and he stayed in that town right he stayed in that yeah, That's until he went world. to yeah, until he went to uh, the Air Force when he was twenty, I believe. So he was there right. for a little bit after high school. And he talks about he talks about this girl that he dated, whose dad worked at Clark's Milk or something, or was the owner, or it was his boss. He basically dated the boss's daughter, and then Lauren said that he bailed when his the dad was kind of expecting that they were going to get married or maybe he was asking like, Oh, when are you going to get married or something? And he said he got freaked out and dumped her. <laughs> yeah. That's the Lauren we know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Which, you know, obviously, you know, again, I, I'm going to put that in the pile of things that didn't happen because if that were the case, if they were talking about if he was dating somebody and it was like young love and, you know, they were talking about getting married or they were dating for quite some time and the marriage topic came up and Lauren bounces. I mean, that would have been the perfect scenario for him. That's the type of relationship that Lauren has always admired. 
And you can see that in his writing of Taken Abroad as well. Yep, that yep. Aaron comes home, meets the first woman to go out and date with, and boom, yep. instant sparks. And, you Great know, yeah. yep. <laughs> they go on amazing dates and have amazing conversations, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, but, you know, for Lauren to not follow through in that type of a situation and say, well, I, you know, I wanted to play the field or I was too young or something, it's all bullshit. That's like, that's the same thing as him saying to you. Uh, since the sting, it's hard. I don't. It's hard for me to want to get close to people when it's the exact opposite. It's right, hard for exactly. people to want to get close to him. Oh sure, so he, definitely. He tries to. He tries to. He tries to spin it to to hit it being in his control. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's the one who's doing the rejecting, not being the rejected. Yeah. That, that's yeah. He said the thing. same thing about the one night stands. They all wanted more. Yeah. yeah. He's the one he didn't want more. Yeah. So, so basically, you have to examine Lorne's bullshit to try and find the truth, because there is no truth with him. It's like it, it's so it, it's it's trying to uncover the shit. So you're not even trying to find the scraps of truth, really, are you? I suppose you are. You're trying to find them within the lies. It makes it difficult. Um. You know, because we've no idea, really. The stu- it's like when the 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 Molly situation. We, we, we've got his little bits of information that he's given us. Some of it is based in truth, but we don't know how much. Like that fur-grown tale is something we've got over and over, but we've no idea what went on there. Something happened. There's no doubt about that. There was a real girl. There's something that went on there. That's more. That's stalking, I think. Oh, but that's my theory. Everybody helps. Yeah, well, there, you might be right. I mean, there's, there's a... There's, you know, considering the way he speaks... The tales he tells, uh, like with Tiffany said earlier, he will say whatever makes him look good in that moment. Honorable and noble, yeah. Like the, when we were talking earlier about that tale he spun about going to the Sting House when he was talking to Debbie for the first time or one of the first times and he was talking about how he was driving to the Sting House but yet he, he, he wanted to take the exit and turn round but he missed the exit because of the bad weather and then he got there and he was thinking about Bud because it was thundering and lightning but he didn't turn round anyway but somehow that made him look better even though he thought about Bud but still didn't turn round and was supposed to believe that that makes him look like a better person. What? Okay. Um, these are the crazy... Th- these are inconceivable stories. Think about the complete shit that he wrote in his lawsuit. Ironically, there is more fiction in that lawsuit than there is in Taken Abroad. It's it's remarkable. Um, it's unrefined, though. He he didn't really perfect his act yet when he wrote that stuff. Actually, it didn't get much better than that, did it? Well, that's what I mean. It's like the the you know there's, yeah. the, there's more basis of reality than taking in Taken Abroad than his lawsuits. Um, and that's that's some that's some statement. So it's it's to sort of decipher what we're trying to get at here is incredibly difficult. <laughs> it really is, but obviously it doesn't mean that we don't have evidence. It's trying to decipher what evidence, you know, is his attitude towards sex is. Some might say a giveaway. That there is, I think there's something that we can all agree on, and I don't think everybody in the chat, everybody here, his experience is extremely limited. Whatever it is, it was fucking minimal. You know, I, I don't think that it's happened, if it's happened more than a couple of times, you know. Um, I think that's something we can all agree on which means that you know it, it, it it's just it's just not happen for him and why would it you know it's pretty funny really isn't it so i have to mention something because i think it'll come up in the comments if we don't bring it up for sure um the lj story lj lj oh, oh yeah. About yeah, that. yeah 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 lauren jr what yeah what do you guys think about that yeah um... <sighs> I, I'm of a mind that Lauren, I mean, I, I kind of think about it a couple of different ways. Lauren convinces himself of things. I think he may have convinced himself that it was possible. Maybe he got drunk and he didn't remember having, what was her name, Carrie, something like that. Um, and that's why he wanted to talk with her. 
so badly. I, I really need to talk to your mom. Um, or he was trying to save face. He knew there was no way that was his son, but he kind of liked the whole fantasy and just went along with it. I agree with that. I, I think it was I do. I agree with that, too. Sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt what's this LJ thing. I don't understand. Oh, you're Winnie a Winnie said that she was contacted or she found Carrie somehow, which is some woman that Lorne throws around as somebody that he had sex with when he was either in Washington or Alaska. And apparently his sister-in-law saw her with a baby a year later after they allegedly hooked up. Right. So Winnie said that she was in contact with this Carrie woman and she put him, her, her in contact with LJ who was Lauren Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren gives the appearance that he believes that this LJ person is real. And he talks to him too, because at this point LJ is an adult. So he does give the appearance, but I do agree with Bapsby that he didn't really believe the story. And I get why, because Winnie's the one saying it, right? So I think in this particular instance, he's like, I need to speak with your mom. I need to speak with Carrie directly. Because I think at that point, he would have been vetting her and saying, okay, where did we meet? What did you look like? You know, and all of that stuff to make sure that she was real and not some internet bullshit. Because I think that he was believing it. Now, I think that, you know, people can look at how he handled the situation when he found out that LJ wasn't real, that this Carrie person wasn't real, that she was just a troll. Because, you know, it, it's it's going to go along with his story that he yep, has exactly. had sex it's before. Exactly, with the image he's trying to yeah. portray. Yeah. yeah. And even though... You know, yeah, he did have a reaction. He did put on his crocodile tears and he, you know, seemed like, you know, oh, you know, mom is going to be upset. Because <laughs> he never you know, all this stuff. He Right, exactly. Number one, he never told his mom because she would punch him in the face. Another stupid, ridiculous, you know, thing that he's coming at her with. Um, but I think that, you know, he was just going along with the story. I don't think he believed it at all. You don't think he would he love if it was mom. true. He said he told her, and she was <laughs> skeptical. That is that is true. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't believe the stories that, you know, Lauren says. Joe Gooder had put it back a, a while back while we were talking that you don't believe stories unless there's evidence from somebody else that it's actually true. So I think that Lauren makes up a lot of the stories of uh, these conversations with his mom. I think he makes up a lot of the stories of these conversations with Tony and Wendy. I think that he makes his catfish known to them. I think he will talk about them or mention them or, you know, I'm talking to somebody, they're, they're coming up. You know, They've heard this story before, but I don't think that he goes into as much detail as he says he does. Oh, Tony and Wendy said this. Well, you're not hearing it from Tony and Wendy. So I immediately put a question mark next to it. And even the conversations with his mom, unless, like you said, you know, his mom being skeptical, I think that that could be Lauren being skeptical. But mm -hmm. he doesn't want to say, I don't believe it. He's going to say his mom doesn't believe it instead. Yeah, I, I don't I, I think he was just playing along because it, it was consistent with the image he's trying to portray about himself. Um, and, and, and he liked thinking that, you know, I'm a dad, you know, he liked that aspect of it, um, even though he knew it wasn't true. But it, again, everything he says isn't. But can you imagine finding out that your father's Lauren Armstrong? Oh, that, that's the topic of, topic of a whole new stream, that dude. Wow. Let's just hope that nobody has to go <laughs> yeah. through that terrible, terrible... Um... Wow. Yeah, I agree. I think he, he did like the idea of sort of playing house with Winnie. It's like when he would talk to the dogs and say, Mommy won't let you have a donut. Daddy, Mommy won't <laughs> let Daddy get you a donut. And he did the same thing with Kayla where he called her mommy. He talked about um, having a baby with her. 
he, when he was talking to Winnie about LJ, he told her, you need to stop saying sexual shit about our son. Yeah, like, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think LJ has a big <laughs> <laughs> Winner. Yeah. Um, there's another story, too, that you guys might remember when he said that Roy walked in on him with somebody. The Chinese uh, food story or the Chinese um, restaurant waitress or somebody? I don't know who it was. Yeah. It sounds to me like it may have just been somebody at the bar, like a, one of his one night stands or whatever. Yeah. But he said that Roy walked in on them. And so that would be almost looked at as, you know, outside evidence, outside of Lauren, because right. Lauren did bring it up to Roy. But the thing is, is Roy really a good witness? <laughs> like, I don't think that he remembers any, you know, you know, according to what what Lauren said, Roy was shit faced. And he was like, he interrupted them asking where the bread was or something like that. So (laughs) I think Roy was Paul down drunk. And so I think that, you know, by Lauren saying, Hey, remember when I was with that woman and you walked in or something and Roy's going to be like, yeah, you know, he's just going to say that because he he has no idea. No, and he he bought Lauren's story about being at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong head, you know? Sure. No, definitely. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to yes, man, Lauren every, every time, especially in front of other people. Sure. Yeah. You know, Roy's a stand-up guy. Have Have I asked you, Amanda James, directly what you actually think? I mean, I agree with you guys. It. I. I thought at first I thought it was just way more likely that he had had sex at one point, at least once, considering his age and, you know, maybe uh, like he was in the Air Force, like that's be said. But the more, the more I hear, and it, it's a lot of his sex stories are really inconsistent. But the biggest piece of evidence that I have that he probably hasn't actually had sex is, like we said, he. I think he would be so obsessive about that woman. He would remember every single detail, even, even if it was Certainly. like drunken thing. Yeah, yeah I speak. do. I, and I think he would have focused a lot, even if, like you said, it was a like he disappeared <laughs> the next day and he couldn't find her. I think he would have focused a lot of his energy on finding her. Because and like he said, would never he... have forgotten a situation. He would never have. He would have told that hard luck story. How he, you know, the one that yeah, got the one away. That, got away. Never exactly. find, you know? that probably is the best piece of evidence, isn't it? But we could relate that back to the Paula thing, but he doesn't give a lot of detail on that from what I can tell. Does he? <clears throat> Paul is the closest He doesn't, thing. but he does He does treat her like the one that got away. So I think that that follows that, that argument. <laughs> now it's Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's the best relationship. <laughs> hmm. I, well, I don't know what else to say about this. Well, you know. We could ask the question of, has he ever fucking kissed anyone? I mean, it's not really a virgin question, but man. Again, I think you'd have to get past a certain stage when you meet someone. I mean, unless he's already known her as a friend or something. Maybe a Paula situation is the closest one. But I don't think meeting a stranger, he would, hey, that naked person's bad. There we go. Um, I don't think that um, meeting a stranger, he'd ever end up doing that. Uh, I think... I don't know. He had a small circle of friends. Uh, I, I don't know. I just can't picture anybody want to make out with him. He, yeah, he's, I was going to say, he still calls it making out, so... Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, yeah and... I can't imagine anybody voluntarily letting that tongue in their mouth. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, wrong with that? Or those <laughs> teeth close to their own mouths, like... <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Alcohol can make anything look appealing. <laughs> Coffee and cigarettes all day. <laughs> right. Jesus. Dead teeth. That, that was also one of my arguments at first. I think it is possible if Lauren was at the bar that there could be a very drunk, aggressive, desperate woman who might 
target him. But the problem is he's so bashful. He's so shy. I don't know if he could seal the deal unless she was incredibly aggressive with him. <laughs> I think I think that would frighten him off. Honestly, yeah, me too. if women were aggressive with him, he would find that unappealing, I think. And plus, who would be aggressive with him? I don't get it. A I mean, very drunk, alcoholic woman who needs a 12 step program desperately. Right. I'm going. There's one well, you know, it's funny. Cosby on her? What does he do? I mean, she's that she's probably falling down, just about to pass There's out. One thing you guys have not sort of thought about is if he was in a karaoke bar in Nashville or wherever and he was singing, I love the first on the karaoke, there would have been a woman somewhere that had found that irresistible surely yep <laughs> yep well you know no. uh, tiffany you would know this question did you see pizza driver's uh question i did uh, yeah i said that he has he has said when he lost his virginity he was that's 19. what i thought when, when did he say that 19 or something like that yeah and she was 29 yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. what does he actually yeah. say about that how much does he say about that instance um, mm-hmm. Not very much that I can recall. I think it was it was just that I just remember what the ending of the relationship was. That they dated for like three months or something like that. And they had sex um quite often because they were dating and she's she was his first and then something happened where she lied. And I remember asking him, I think, um, well, what ha- What did she lie about? Why did you break up? And he said he couldn't remember, which would be bullshit. Yeah. What he was said to name? Kayla, it was did money. He her, did he give a name? He did, Denise. Denise, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was pretty much it. I think it's interesting that he, he it was an older woman. <laughs> yeah. I think she, yeah. he said she had children. Yeah. <sighs> and... Gross like a crazy ex see, or something. He gives specific details on the person, but that doesn't mean that the interaction was genuine. So it could have been someone that said hello to him and then he's created this scenario in his mind where they've had sex multiple times. That's right. A possibility. Did he say did he say how they met? I don't remember. Did he describe the sex? No. That's a not point. really. Oh. <laughs> These I think we would have had children. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I've got a question for each of you. If there was a lawn sex tape, would you all watch it? And it was explicit. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, oh, would. I would too. In fact, I'd be watching <laughs> it right now, actually. <laughs> We'd be screening it right now. It's like a private screening. <laughs> We'd have everybody there. <laughs> yep. Especially well, if it's skin on skin. Have sex with himself on the phone, and that's pretty traumatic. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's true. Every one of his masturbation tapes are are sex tapes, right? Technically. Technically well, I don't know. I mean, I I I don't think he he was being genuine. I don't it think sounds, he was. It sounds like he's in pain. It does not sound <laughs> enjoyable. That's a good point. It does. It doesn't sound <laughs> like a <laughs> like a pleasurable experience for him, does it? And, uh, he's kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and his teeth, you can hear like his teeth are clenched. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <He's growling. laughs> you know I, I, I almost feel like you know this lawn sex tape that we're all desperate to see. Maybe, like, how fun it would be to orchestrate it, but considering the amount of fucking time I've said I don't like the catfishing, that would be pretty fucking bad of me to to endorse such a thing, but it would be fucking (laughs) hilarious. Yeah. I'm surprised he never sent a video of himself jerking off. What, to Kayla? Well, to To anybody. To, right, to the the catfish. I think a sex tape would be apologies and excuses. Well, you know what? When... When he has, I know that he he's flapping it around, like I said before, like in the shower. But then also, if you guys remember the Green Goblin video, and he mm-hmm. was outside, he did yeah. take it out, and he was flapping it again. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of flapping. <laughs> That's where he gets his gratification, by the way. 
exposing himself. To somebody somebody looking at it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I would but imagine he's done that a lot in real life. Uh, you mean like a flasher? Yep. Yep. Or you know, I don't think situations. so. Or uh, just sitting in sitting in his truck. Like, sitting in the truck, yeah. Women. Not necessarily yeah, hey, look over here, you know. Right. He's got his dick well out. he did he did in his when he was working. Right. Oh, yeah. It was like second. He definitely nature, had so. that thing out. Yeah. He definitely <laughs> took his dick out when he was doing that. Like it's it's disgusting. Like engine He's oil so check. I got enough gas. Dick is inside my pants. Good. We're ready to go. <laughs> right. I don't understand why he's so proud of that thing. He's remarkably <laughs> fond of sending dick pics. Like more yeah. so than anyone I've ever heard of. Yeah, definitely. I think that's his way of closeness. I think that's his intimacy. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't think Lorne actually knows if he's a virgin or not. I think that it, I think that it is bullshit. And his his lies become so pronounced that that he lives a life where the truth is just this blurry thing that rarely touches him. I think he's so confused about reality in his own life. I don't think he even fucking knows. So if you were going to ask I him that question, is. he'd probably say yes and believe it, but he actually isn't. You know what I mean? Do you, do you understand what yeah, I'm getting at? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think I do. I think it's possible for him to convince himself and believe his own lies. Like he had convinced himself that he told Kayla no in the chat and he never wanted to go there. Those are things that, you know, I think he'll take to the grave. He's convinced himself that that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a little, like a little fumble, um, that word again, in his mind could turn into full blown intercourse if he recounts that tale so often. And and therein lies the real problem. It's like, how do you ever decide? I mean, obviously, we'll never really know. People have their opinions. You know, people have the really strong ones where they wholeheartedly believe it. I, I still don't know. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's fun, isn't it, to just sort of <laughs> delve into this pathetic guy's life and you just it just doesn't have to make you feel good about yourself, doesn't it? It's like, Jesus Christ, you know, you think, fucking hell. None of my life has been that bad, really. <laughs> you know I, mean? I mean, in a nutshell, to me, I think the only people Lauren, ha uh, any women Lauren has seen naked has been family members. I, I think that's true. Well, life. what we do know, beyond a doubt, is that if he has had sex at any time in his life, he absolutely has not in the past. Yeah, years. that's for sure. We, we can block off time. That's, actually, a, that's right. a fact. He even acknowledges we, that mm -hmm. um, he hasn't had sex since before the sting, he says. Yeah, we can narrow down the period. We can go back 20 years from now and then the first, what did he say, 19 years of his life? So that's out. So it's between 19 and when he was 30 Yeah, is the time frame. And Just the fact happening... that, hmm? I'm sorry. No, no. No, I, I was thinking about, you know, just the fact that he can give so many details about sexual encounters he supposedly had like 20, 25 years ago, because I was thinking, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to give details about uh, an encounter I had that long ago. I mean, I, I wouldn't remember, you know, which position we were in or what. <laughs> That's true. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's yeah. just really it's just really strange the the fact that he would remember specific, um, you know, she put her left leg here or she put it on my shoulder and she did this. It's just I don't know. I I just thought that yeah. was a little odd. Or, or or that he doesn't remember anything at all. You know, right? It's either he remembers d specific details of ridiculous things, you know, like a milk bag, or <laughs> he doesn't remember anything at all. I forgot. How about that? Yeah, no bad. Again, like we threw out the anatomy that. discussion. His lack of knowledge on that. We just I mean, threw that's that just out. funny. <laughs> I know. Well, well, Andrew started this discussion by saying, "Look, we're all we all don't know how many clits everybody has." So yeah, you know, look, and, we, and, and women just walk around with bags of milk strapped to their chest all yeah. the time. But if you throw <laughs> that into the equation, 
you know, kind of makes kind of strengthens <laughs> the argument even more. But I, I do. I, I the questions I have are are the are the years of his Air Force time and up until he left Nashville. And, uh, you know, th- those yeah. times and, and people say that the Air Force, you know, there's a lot of drinking going on. He got mm-hmm. thrown out. He was a fuck up. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it could have, but he's in Alaska. I think the ratio up there is like, you know, three men to one woman or something yeah, I like mean, that. In, in, in the military, the ratio favors the women anyway. I, right. I can tell you right. from experience. So, that, so you get to talk about even That's more there. That's why I went there. <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's, it's easy what, what i mean is i mean it's easy for women not so easy for men however even even ugly guys you know that i knew got laid and it's you know it's not about looks anyway but you guys know what i mean yeah a lot of them would go to bordellos and, and places like that when they yeah. leave you know but lauren is i guess anti that so we can throw that out um unless, unless he's so ashamed of having cheap. to pay for it he would never admit it right. So there's right. that possibility, I guess. But then he comes back to Washington and he lives with his brother, I guess, and the mm-hmm. nieces and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I can never tell. Tiffany, did he have his own place or did he live with his brothers? I I don't remember that. Did he? I think that he. I think it was both. I think that mm-hmm. he lived with his brother and his wife, but I think he also had his own place because he does say that the nieces had their own room, and the right. nephews slept out on the couch. That wasn't in Maine. Where no. Betty Betty saw the graffiti on the wall saying "Uncle Lorne rules" or something like that. Uh, no. Uncle Lorne is king or the boss. Or, you remember no, that, that Uncle that Lorne was boss. I, I do remember yeah. that, but I believe that when he is talking about spending eighty five percent of the time or some some weird number like that, it was when he was in Washington because he said that his his brother was working or whatever, and then his brother's wife was depressed. I remember him him talking about that because that's when, you know, he said that he was around a lot of teenagers and right. he was used to talking to kids. So, yeah. That's right. So th- there's that possibility that, you know, it, it's kind of a blurry, uh, you know, scenario over in, in Washington. We don't know whether it was family oriented, whether he was out slutting around every night, uh, which I doubt, but. You know, then there's that. And then he comes back to Maine and he's, he's on the he's on the computer with Amanda James almost immediately. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he went. Well, that 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 Amanda James and Amanda James can tell us better. Um, but she was talking to Lauren back in Washington. So they never right. well, stopped right. communicating. He st- yeah, he said he, he stayed faithful Maine. when he, he would catch that Maine sale, to doesn't he? Closer. He did say yeah, that he right. stayed faithful. For two yeah. Years. Right. Right. He didn't date anybody because of her, but didn't the real anybody, reason why didn't anybody. Is Yeah, we can't wait those dating words. Anybody. Those and I was years. wondering too, I wonder if he got any of his his ideas about sex from having cyber sex with women. Yeah. yeah. Cuz he definitely wouldn't be doing that. And by the way, not that. children. Not, I I believe he was he was doing this with adult women too. Sure. I think he was finding ways of doing that. But again, mm-hmm. He would end up boring the shit out of him. Oh, definitely. You know? <laughs> Maybe those were his one night stands. With his lame descriptions, can you just imagine trying to have? Oh God. <laughs> well, you've heard you've heard um, Doctor Armstrong, right? Right. Yeah. Dr. They're terrible. Armstrong. And oh, God, I don't even I don't even want to go off on that thing. Do you think that Lauren <laughs> could be confusing, or do you think Lauren is inflating phone sex with sex? Yes. Yes. He 100% okay. believes that that is sex. Sounds like someone's building something on the mic. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get out of that. It's, it's, it's I mean, he considers, he, he considers phone sex actual sex. I mean, if you have your phone sex with anyone else, that's cheating on him. Phone yeah, fucking. he even calls it phone fucking. Yeah. Phone fucking, yeah. yeah. Like and when he says, I'm I'm fucking you tonight. <laughs> to be fair, if I was in a relationship with someone and if I'm gonna... I heard them having phone sex with someone, I'd be pretty pissed off. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. No, I understand. Well, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, to the extent. <laughs> he, 
he acts like you're you're physically having sex with someone else. Yeah. I mean, that's well, like, his reaction. It's as real as it gets for him, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, well the yes, reason why absolutely. I ask that because when you talk about this, how Lauren convinces himself about something. Oh shoot! I don't know if you can still hear that. Uh, he convinces himself about the truth when it's not the truth. Uh, that's the kind of thing where he could say, I'm having phone sex, so that's sex, and therefore I'm not a virgin. Right. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a stretch, but we're talking about Lauren. Um, Lee Greer's evil twin, Eel, what's that say? Eel Rear Gizzle. Eel Rear. It's Lee Greer backwards. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So thanks for pointing that out. It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Lee Greer with a mustache on. Um, something made Lauren turn to on-right relationships. There is a reason that he's preferred method of trying to weep women. But I think that's just... that's He's exhausted all other avenues. And, and, you know, oh, online, that's easy. It's like, you know, people go on dating... A lot of the times, not always, a lot of times people go online dating because it's easier. Sometimes people think that that might be the only way they get to meet people. I think that initially yeah. I went on there to try That's and, a good point. To try and um, solicit kids because it's, it's what you talk about when you try and, and fail to make him admit the truth, Tiffany, is that it was... Um, it's it, it's under a shadow, is it? You know, it's under a cloak. You know, he, he's doing it... Because it provides the perfect um, uh, sort of shield for him. Or I thought it did. <laughs> he just unfortunately for him, Kayla was uh, an FBI agent. <laughs> well, it's like he said to to Tiffany, the internet is all about sex. In, in his mind, that's, that's what he thought of. These chat rooms were I a agree. way to meet women. Well, no, don't forget what he said. Never. I fucking hate the internet. I, 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 <laughs> that, I wish I could listen to that again. I don't know what call that is. I just remember hearing it and being in hysterics because that's so, so funny. He hates the internet yeah. because he doesn't know how to use it and it ended up getting busted, you know. So funny. Yeah, and it's never, it's never worked out well for him. <laughs> you know, the Amanda James situation just dragged him around. You know, for I have a question about that, years. Tiffany. Did did mm -hmm. he talk to Amanda James after his sister outed her? Yes. Yeah. Did he? How do we know? He did. He talked to her for like six months. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. Yeah. I don't yeah, know why I'm surprised. He said it took them six months to stop talking to each other. What do you think that means? <laughs> and then he asked her email, right, and saw pictures of naked men. And yes. Er, email with her and other men. How but did he get her email? Sure Jesus. He guessed it. Yeah, her Bono, favorite Bono, you too. Bono, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what a creep. But even that, wow. I'm sure she's the one who had to cut contact, even after all that. Definitely, definitely. She probably just blocked him. I mean, how funny is it that <laughs> for a time, I believe that it was maybe while they were in transition or maybe when he was moving back, she said that her messenger didn't work anymore and he would have to email her. Right. Right. <laughs> broken. Did. I'm waiting for the repairman so, to come. Right. And so that yeah, means broken. he didn't have her phone number. He had no right. way to contact her. That's insane. And of course he drives through Pennsylvania to get home too. <laughs> Well, it. sure, yeah, but he went. He wasn't able to get in touch with her. Yeah, I mean, this that kind of like leads me to believe that he really gets his gratification from online communications, telephone communications, text yeah. messages, even. That's why he can be on the phone for nine. Yeah, but that's all he's ever known, though, dude, isn't it? He doesn't have a point of um, yeah comparison or reference, when, like you know. Yeah, when that technology came out, he was he was over the moon. I mean, he was just wasting so much gas stalking women, and now he can sit home and do it, you know? Well, I mean, it'd be interesting to know, let's just say by some freak of the universe or some kind of ban or whatever, he was never allowed access to the internet or just decided never to use it. Um, he'd never have got online. It'd be interesting to know where his life would actually be, you know? Um 
whether he'd be like stalking real. I mean, we're opening up a can of worms here, but you know whether he'd actually be stalking women all the time, or you know, it'd just be very interesting. That's thing. what I'm wondering about now. You guys, what do you guys think he's doing without a catfish? Assuming he doesn't have a catfish, what's he doing with his time? I'm trying to find one, probably. No, I mean, in terms of trying to find something up. I don't I know how he would do that. I don't know how he would. It would have to be. It would have to be somebody who comes from the internet, really, because when he was uh, before he went to jail, um, he was being asked, like, "Well, you know, if Tony's not a good friend for you, then why don't you make other friends? What about the people that you work with? Because a lot of times when you make friends they're people that you work with they're people that you spend a lot of time with um so why wouldn't that happen and he says that he's not interested in making new friends but of course we know why we know that the rso thing is going to be way too much of a of an issue um in, in order for him to do that it's going to be really uncomfortable and embarrassing him. what or they're already shunning him Sure, absolutely. No- absolutely. Uh, right. I, I think a lot of people are going to be very aware of who he is. Um, so, I mean, and he's not able to go to bars. He's not going right. to be meeting people. So people aren't going to be introducing their family members or their friends to Lauren to date. Right. You know, they're going to know even more than we do. What, Can what you a imagine bringing is. him home and having to explain him to your parents? This is- Right. Right. Doesn't Moore doesn't his, his aunt like try to suggest women he should date or something? I thought I heard that. Well, she's gone now, Babs. She's oh, gone. Is she? Yeah, she moved. Uh, she, yeah, no, his, one of half of his support system's gone. I share and move out of state. Oh, Babs, oh, you I thought meant... that she was gone. She was like, dead. dead. <laughs> no, she no, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, obviously not. No, no. Right. I mean, that can't make it any easier for him, but. Um, but I, yeah, I she, think that she that, did uh, mention that she knew a, a woman who had a couple kids and God her and her husband got a divorce or something or he died or something like that. And she wished that she had a man to do stuff with. And I don't know why she would suggest that this woman with children <laughs> should hang up with Lauren. He's not allowed to be around them. I think it's because... She's just as blind, and and his mom are uh, just as blind as he is about his his real status in life. Mm-hmm. Mom yeah. knows well, I wouldn't if, do it. Aunt Sharon knows I wouldn't do it. Yeah, you you put them in front of probation, they're gonna get a mouthful. a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard from a fifty year old man. Mm-hmm. And he was my, if my mom came to talk to you, she'd be so <laughs> mad. Oh wow! She'd really tell you what she thinks. <laughs> he was proud of it. He thought it was cute and protective. It means she uh-huh. loves him. Yeah. And every time he interacts with his mom, she she sounds like the least protective person ever. They don't think you're so smart. <laughs> oh, whatever. You <laughs> gotta take your head That's out so of great. your ass. Making a fool out of you. <laughs> she must be so fucking frustrated. Get it out. With <laughs> Honorable, I think, uh, honorable. I think all he's got left right now is drinking. I mean, he's got no, no. Tony's gone, and and I don't think Wendy's going to receive him at his at her house. Uh, he never spends time with his mom anyway. Even when he has nothing to do, he's not going to do that. Right. Uh, he has no catfish uh, to preoccupy him to make him feel like he's wanted. Uh, that, that he's part of something. Yeah, um, I don't think I, we can say he doesn't. There's always that, somebody yeah. that wants to do it, it seems. Maybe. Oh, you mean another catfish we don't know about? I yeah, say assuming well, there isn't. I'm saying assuming there isn't. Mm. You know, what's he got left in his life? Well, we'd love to know. I mean, we've said, haven't we, before, that if we could have like a cam on that guy, that Google Earth cam he thinks is real on him, I'd be watching that 24-7. In fact, I quit my job. <laughs> and just fucking sit at home and watch him all fucking day. In fact, and you, you know go. what would happen too? Somebody would screen record that so that we could watch when we can't. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to watch it. See what he's doing. Hey, Lauren's, Lauren's, you know, making another pile of shit in his yard. <laughs> <laughs> watch him my, favorite ep- my favorite episode would be the, uh, the Lauren and uh, Roy raging at each other drunk. 
That'd be with like Hulk. You know, what would everything. be interesting would be to see them working and then Roy going out to the woods and drinking and then coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and then progressively, he just gets them more drunk because I just imagine Roy just this fall down drunk guy, you know, like wobbling he barely stand remember when he fell asleep with his face on the horn yes. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> even yeah. i heard that that was fucking hilarious do, do you remember when roy said <laughs> he was that, so furious but, as well he was tiffany roy was talking about that scenario where he was doing all the work and you were just doing somersaults on your front lawn <laughs> <laughs> yeah that video that he took but roy, roy does all the work when he goes over there I believe so it. He doesn't have Roy anymore either, by the way. He doesn't have from Roy. From what I understand. From what I understand. Um, what's he got left? He's got to go back to alcohol. Come on, Lauren. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, but, well, the thing, is, is that, the thing is, is that he got busted for that particular reason. Which is the only reason so, why he's not drinking. I yeah, think, I, yeah, I think that that would keep him away. Even, even though he's very stupid and even when, you know, previously the very first time that they put a breathalyzer on him and he tried to, you know, be smarter than them and still drink and just say, oh, I forgot. I didn't get the message or whatever. And he when he was going to blow dirty um, yeah. and he knew that and his PO knew that. That's why she made him do it right then in the morning. And he was he's still smart, he can get away time. with it now. He won't be on the road, you know, and, and it, all, all he has to do is not go to class drunk. That's all he has to do. Nobody will catch him. Nobody will give a shit, I think. Um, I'm going to yeah. have to start wrapping this up now. Has anybody changed the perspective a little bit, given what we've talked about? Probably not. I yeah, haven't. Not really. <laughs> I'm a little more open-minded about it now. Oh, What so, do you mean? You know, yeah. Yes. Open minded saying that he could have had sex. Well well that that these these moments could have happened. I just no okay. evidence of it. But you know, I used to be really, really um uh, dug in on my my feelings about it, but something you said, Andrew, I forgot what it was. I usually forget what Andrew says too. To be fair, I forget what I say myself because I don't know what he's on about. <laughs> so I'm not really gonna uh, I can't really criticize, but it, it's it's like I said, isn't it? it it's <clears throat> my summary is we can't discount totally a drunken fumble. Even the people that were adamant and still adamant that he's a virgin, you've got to be honest and say you don't know that that didn't happen. Nobody does. Sure. Um, even he probably doesn't. That's the thing about it. How could you get the truth from somebody who doesn't even know what the truth is themselves? But there's there's yeah. a lot of evidence to suggest that he never has. There's, there's there's one thing we can all agree on: there has never been a proper sexual relationship he's had with anybody. He's not experienced. No. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's got no. He's a stalker. He's incredibly desperate, incredibly insecure. He ticks a load of boxes for the virgin thing. But but like I said, it doesn't necessarily discount some minor experience. Um, and no doubt we'll be doing this exact same stream next week. No, but obviously it's a fun thing to discuss because we'll never know the answer, and it it brings up a lot of amusement. And we can, you know, we like to poke fun at Lawn, don't we? And see that this guy just, for all his annoying characteristics, never gets anywhere. He's like the epitome of failure. So, um, and I think for what for what a shitty person he is, especially what he's tried to do, <clears throat> excuse me, on the internet, talking to kids and exposing himself and, you know, possibly going to meet them. And we know of one instance where he definitely did. I, I don't, I don't care. You know, obviously I think it, it makes it even more funny if he's a virgin because yeah. Lauren, yeah, I looked at it. the funny thing about Lauren is that he cannot get out of his own way to save his life. He can't. He's a, so, I'm yeah, sorry. as much as as much as he tries, you know, he tries to to have give the good impression that he's this this guy that gets laid all the time and women want him and you know, he's he can make your bank account look like shit with the right jobs mm -hmm. and all of that he but none of it ever works out for him and I think that's great. 
Mm-hmm. He's he's a registered sex offender who potentially has never had sex. Oh, isn't that funny? <laughs> If if that isn't the ultimate is failure, I don't know what is. That's it's probably perfect. the only guy in his rape class who's never had sex. Yeah, it's you're in rape be. class trying to tell you how to not rape people, but you've never even done anything. You've never even had sex. And he's the only one that can't pass it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that is true. That is true. He's been there for years and years. This is why you I think mom was like a gift from above, just to just to make he's us like, laugh. Like the, really, there really is nothing like quite like it. It's fucking. He's remarkable. like the school that, cat. That's brilliant. That. You know, that's there every year. Fucking rape class. You know? Never been with anybody, and he still can't pass it. <laughs> wow. And, but I love the fact that right. he can't pass it because um, I, that's the essence of what makes him funny. Unless anybody has any closing <laughs> remarks, I'm gonna have to uh, get going. Uh, the great Bapsby, thank you very much for. T- for participating yeah, arts in, in the uh, stream from oh, Babs, we thank, you. Out of you. Guys. thank you are we out Andrew no I don't think so everybody else where's everyone I don't know, it just went quiet. I'm right here, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought... Okay. I, th- yeah, I thought it was this is the time you tell us to shut up. Right, okay. Um, no, I was just saying thanks to everybody and thanks for... Ba- I don't know whether you heard that, I just said thanks to Bapsby for joining us. Uh, you've not been on our stream before, so just hope you've had a good time. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Um, yeah. And by the way, Babs, if you, can we can I say something real quick before we go, um, Andrew? You got a second? Yeah. Um, we've missed you a lot, and and I, I I just want you to know that I I really appreciate that work that you did. You you commit to like two years now in doing that chat log, and I can only imagine how draining that is for you. Thank and you. And I'm just so I'll, glad I'll you're back. back and you're okay. That's all. I'll I'll be back. I just I have a lot going on, just like everybody else this time year. I have a lot going on. That's all. Yeah, you'll never, love- you'll never escape the lawn no. saga. You're kind of there, like a lot. You're kind of there forever. It never lets, it never lets go of you. Um, so everybody in the chat, um, leave any comments. Um, I, I would ask if people think he has had sex. Please let me know because it's a, a very minority of people. I'm not sure, if I'm being honest. Um, it's a difficult one to call, but I'd be uh, interested to see people's opinions. I hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway, it's just a, it's it's a good bit of fun, isn't it? It's good to speculate. I would like to know if we missed anything in the comments. If anybody, yeah, does, yeah, that's think, a good. Any, thinks that we missed something? Yeah, good point. That would be great. Yeah, and if you and if you don't think that he's a virgin, then give us the reason why. I would love to know to know your theory and not just oh he's definitely not a virgin something like that i definitely want to yeah, want to hear definitely. the reason yeah <laughs> and be prepared to <laughs> roll that's right we're all gonna respond <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna berate you <laughs> yeah. um right okay well um thanks to my friends here who've joined me thanks for everybody in the chat um, Love you, Shins Manhole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Special. Uh, you see, you even you, even you're becoming um, affectionate towards Shins Manhole. Um, couldn't yeah. be. It yeah. wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a proper it. stream without them. Um, I don't know. We we should hopefully be. Uh, well, if we're not back next Sunday, we're back the Sunday. Oh, it's Christmas Day, isn't it? Isn't it Christmas Day. Uh, two weeks. Oh, yeah. Anyway, never mind. But we'll we'll be back soon. Christ knows what we'll do. We might actually get back to the chat log next time we do a stream because we've not done that for ages, and it's always good fun. Uh, so, guys, yeah. um, thank you, everybody, and.